Hello, I'm Caleb, and this is the second installment of tips for CNC beginners. What's in front of us right now is a couple examples of switching power supplies. Uh, this is obviously pretty common. Most people have seen this type of power supply form factor in laptops and all sorts of different things. But even in kits like the Shape Oco 2 full kit from Inventables, you'll find a 24 volt power supply that's in a form factor. So they're very common. Uh, they're very easy to use because there's nothing to do. You just plug them into the wall and you wire them up to your electronics and you go. Another type of form factor that you'll find quite often is one like this. This is a 5 volt 6 amp power supply, but they come in all sorts of different varieties. You know, I've actually got two 36 volt power supplies of that form factor in my case. They're much larger, obviously, but they're very nice for several reasons. One, they have mounting brackets on the side and on the bottom, so it's very easy to mount them to an enclosure. Uh, much easier than something like this where this would definitely work better on the outside of the case, which I would probably do that, but I like having everything nice and tidy in one box. Uh, it has a very nice um, terminal block for tying up the 110 or 220 power in some cases to it, and also for the DC out. Another thing is this little um, potentiometer that is used for voltage adjustment which we will get into at the end of this video. We'll actually do a demonstration on measuring and adjusting the voltage that comes off of this power supply, which is a good idea to do when you buy power supplies like this, especially when they come from places like China, because while it's really cheap and typically the product works the way it's supposed to work, it's always a good idea to do some um, testing before you wire it up to your electronics and discover that it's you know, detrimental to everything. So we will get into that later. But first I'd like to talk about the term overrating. Now, what I mean by that is that when you're looking for a power supply, you should look for a power supply that has a little bit more current capacity than what your electronics are going to draw. So for instance, if you have your stepper motors and all of the rest of your electronics are drawing 20 amps of current, you should probably think about getting a power supply that has at least 10% more current capacity on it than, than 20 amps. So 22 amps would be a good example of that if we're following a rule of 10%. So obviously you don't want to go overboard and buy a power supply that has 30 amps of power in that scenario, but definitely 22 amps would be a better scenario. And the reason you should do this is because Power supplies, like any piece of electronics, are prone to wear more when they reach their maximum or are required to run at their maximum limits on a regular basis. So you'll end up possibly wearing your power supplies out or blowing them up if you try to run them right at their maximum for any amount of time. The other thing to keep in mind is that when you run a power supply near its maximum current output, you run the risk of having voltage dip. So well, this is a 5 volt power supply, if I ran it right at 6 amps, it's very likely that it would be dipping below 5 volts. And it might even be surprising how far the voltage might dip. So it's a good idea to have a little bit of headroom on the current capacity of the power supply. One other thing to keep in mind is that power supplies in this kind of a form factor often have a switch either inside the housing or on the side that you can switch between either 110 or 220 power, which just makes it a little bit more versatile, especially when you're in a situation where you have a spindle that uses a 220 VFD. That would allow you to have a much simpler wiring solution to your electronics package, where you just have 220 running to both the CNC electronics and to the VFD. So I hope that was helpful. The next thing I'm going to do is set up a multimeter and we're going to wire up this power supply that's in front of us and we're going to actually measure and possibly adjust the DC voltage that's being outputted from this particular power supply. Okay, so we have our power supply all set up and we have it fired up with power and we have our multimeter right here. So we're going to take our two multimeter probes and put them on the DC plus and negative voltage rails and we're going to read it and as you can see coming out of the measurement on the multimeter we are getting 4.877 volts. 
So we're kind of a little lower than 5 volts on this particular power supply. So we're going to use a little screwdriver on this potentiometer. We're going to move it up. And as you can see, as I'm moving it, it actually is moving the voltage up on the multimeter. Okay, went past it. So we just have to turn it back a little bit. Kind of just like turning the volume up and down on a radio. There we go. That's good enough. Oops. So there you have it. That's how easy it is to adjust the voltage on one of these switching power supplies. And that's definitely good enough as long as you're in that plus minus you know 10 percent range on most electronics that's all you're asking for so that's how to adjust that and that's some tips on choosing a good power supply so hopefully this um, helped you out and gives you a little bit of an idea of what you need to be thinking about when setting up your electronics and what you need to be thinking about when you purchase your electronics especially your power supplies in this case so thanks for watching and rate the video below. Bye.